Solo de película pudo llegar a hablar con todas las estrellas de Shazam. You're like a bad guy, right? Okay, 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 okay. Look, before this gets really stupid for you, you should know that I'm basically invincible. So you know. Oh! <laughs> the weapons of man draw no blood from our kind. The only thing that extinguishes magic is magic. All right, so my first question is, you've done some antagonists uh, before, so uh, did it take some convincing uh, when the project was proposed, or once you saw the role you were immediately in? Well, it's a little bit of everything. I mean, I'd worked with Peter Safran, the producer, before, mm -hmm. so he knew me. Um, I've played a lot of villains in my time, so I kind of uh, assumed that they understood that I knew what I was doing. Uh -huh. And uh, I have to say, having played a lot of those villains, this is one of the more interesting ones in that he gets to fly, mm -hmm. he gets the fire electricity out of his hands, you know, and if you're going to play a baddie, you want him to be really bad. Uh, but, I mean, it, your side of the story, uh, without giving too much away, it goes dark. So sure. I, I wonder, uh, was that having something to chew on as opposed to being a sort of mustache twirling, which is not the case mm. in here, so was that appealing for you as an actor and challenging? Yeah. yeah. I mean, often the antagonists or the bad guys, they don't really get a fleshed out story, backstory mm. at all, and in this, you see me as a young boy. Mm -hmm. So you see where some of that um, behavior might come from. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that's pretty rare. You know, it often happens for the hero that you'll have a backstory. Yeah. But uh, to be able to do what he does, Dr. Zavala, in this movie, mm -hmm. and for people to maybe not forgive him, but at least understand him, yeah, you're on his quite side a, big a little step bit. in yeah. this kind of a movie. Yeah. So given that, one of the things that impressed me in the crucial scene where he goes to see where the wound of his childhood traumas goes, he goes straight to it. Mm. Um, there is a little bit, uh, did you study the, the actor who played your character? Because there is some sort of a childlike pain that you bring not, not only to the spectacle of what happens in that scene, which was, I really enjoyed that. Uh, yeah, I mean, I was aware of him and I knew what he looked like and mm. I got a sense of how he moved and what he was like. Mm. And, uh, and that was kind of enough. I mm. thought they'd cast him really well. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, it's the audience's imagination, really, that make the link between him and I. Yeah. Well, the rest of the movie is so much, so much fun. Was, was doing those, those whole special superpowers, was it a fun set? Because it's just, the energy comes off the screen. So, I don't know, I imagine that if you're playing that character, you're carrying the weight of your shoulders. So I wonder how, sort of that, yeah. the contrast of that. Did you have fun on set, I guess is my question. Absolutely, because yeah. I, I haven't done a lot of movies with mm -hmm. a lot of kids in. Uh -huh. And I think the thing that they reminded me was to have fun. Mm. Because, you know, you can do these things and piecing together every tiny bit of the jigsaw of a, of a massive fight sequence can be, you know, a long period of time and it can be very demanding. Mm. And every day on set you had a bunch of guys and girls all just having a laugh and, mm. and reminding you that actually we're all a bunch of big kids just making stories. Mm. So that bit I really enjoyed, yeah. So do you break easily? Because I imagine if I had to do a scene with Zachary, that would be one of the biggest challenges. Uh, do you but, mean uh, laugh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You do? I'm a giggler. And, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So lots of outtakes on DVD of you. There's not, plenty. There's yeah. plenty in there, yeah. Because he, he's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, Zach just, you know, he is that part. And mm. he's in life. He Although he probably gets annoyed now with people saying it. But he does have Yeah, because there has access. to be some acting on his side as well. Yeah. Well, sure. Yeah. sure. <laughs> but he does have access to the kid in himself. Yeah. So he was good fun to be around, too. So I think I have 12-year-old twin boys, and I think they've been around in, in, in where superheroes, are, there is a superhero film every other day, but uh, when we were growing up, not so much. Did you have a character, a hero, heroic character that meant a lot to you during your childhood? Because I think Stack is getting a lot of that now, reaction from kids who are uh, connecting with Shazam. Mm. Mm. Brits didn't really grow up with the kind of superheroes that, uh, that were North on the Americans side of it. did. You know, I mean, the, the comics we had were very different. I was aware, though, of Superman, and I was just telling somebody that the other day, that I, I, I totally remember that image of the little boy lifting up the car uh, mm -hmm. at some point because somebody's was... trapped underneath it, and the kindly old couple looking on and thinking, who is this kid? Mm -hmm. I do remember thinking at the time when I was younger, what an amazing story. So I was totally aware of, uh, of Superman. Mm -hmm. um, but we didn't really grow up with the comics in the same way, and it's been fascinating to me to see the fans' reaction to a movie like this because you know, there's, there's people who really are invested in this mm -hmm. stuff. So it was beholden to me to get it right. What do you think is special or unique about this one as opposed to sort of the genre that we've been having for all this time? Superheroes in general or yeah, DC? Su yeah. uh, superheroes in general, yeah. I think the, the, the amount of fun there is to be had with mm -hmm. that sort of big style change up from a young boy in a man's body. I mean, the wit of the movie, the, the core of it, is just really great fun. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but what I love more than anything is that they've made the bad guy really yeah. bad too. Because if there's no jeopardy, if our heroes aren't in trouble, genuinely, you know, that morality tale of needing to vanquish the bad guy doesn't really work. Mm. So my last question would be, there's an off-the-cuff energy uh, that seems like you guys were able to try things. I don't know, it feels very spontaneous, which it means that you were doing your job, but I wonder, mm. was that the case with your director? Did he lay you, let you play around, try different things? Well, I think a lot of the joy for Zach and the interaction he has with uh, Jack's character was based on throwing it around a little bit and mm. having fun with it. Less, less possible with the bad guy. I mean, yeah. I had a very Structure. definite set of rules that mm. I had to follow in order to terrify the life out of everybody. Um, and you can't really wing it. Mm. You need to, <laughs> you know, be pretty exact. So, but the fighting stuff was really uh, well done. And I think, you know, playing a guy who flies and fires electricity, I mean, what could be more fun than that? Yeah. And we had fun. Thank you so much. Nice talking. Oh, you. and you. And First you. One Perfect man. Pure of heart. Flawless in every way. Billy. Where is he? Super villain! Super villain! Worse. Much worse. What do I want? I want. And go! That. You know, it's the same core principle of, is it a story that I want to tell? And I think the horror movies we tell, you know, have great characters with great stories, that, and we spend time building these characters up so that when they ultimately go through the trials and tribulations they go through, you care about them. And it's the same thing that you can bring to the, the superhero world. Um, so I love the opportunity to tell these stories on a, on a large scale, whether it's Aquaman or whether it's Shazam. It's just fun to be able to do it, particularly with filmmakers like James Wan or David Sandberg. Uh, you know, you get to work with guys at the top of their game telling really big, fun stories that are rooted in great characters. Daily Bats, I choose you. Say my name so my powers will become yours. Shazam! I'd like to purchase some of your finest beer, please. Well, I, I hope for them to <laughs> experience that sense of fun-filled adventure that we, you know, we, the kind of movies that I grew up with, you know, from the 80s, uh, that, and later on, where, where it's, uh, you know, it, it's fun, it's adventure, but it's also drama, it's also a little bit of scariness. And uh, it's, it's just a great story, ultimately, about family, finding your family, finding your, your place in the world. Shazam. A lair. Yes. If you have a location, like on a cliff, like a castle-esque type thing. Overlooking some water. Overlooking some water, splashing on rocks and stuff, then we will take that. Experience it in IMAX.